Theology, on the other hand, asserts intention rather than accident. And in doing so, it captures an essential characteristic of reality, that is, its coherency and mutability, its temporal being as both and simultaneously self-identical and subject to and capable of varieties of change too numerous to reckon. The biblical creation narrative allows us to say that the world was made to have the qualities of life, that is, to exist in time, to change and be changed freely within real but rarely absolute limits. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Nations and languages arose out of the growth and dispersion of population. Profound differences did not impinge upon essential identity, as science can tell us, though historically and at present the differences seem to matter most to us. There is a mighty paradox in identity. The infant and the old man are oneself. The life-changing event can only modify a particular life, which came before it and will continue after it. Yet the change is real, even profound. And beauty, intrinsic and perceived, attends on every change, transforming itself, refining itself, to engage the altered mind again. The, this renewed encounter with beauty is often experienced as a manifestation of grace. Beauty awaits our notice, while, as experience, it is eloquently modified by our histories and temperaments, speaking to us one by one, soul by soul. Beauty is grandly present in the architecture of the cosmos, minutely present in the structure of the atom, and yet we humans can seem capable of utter indifference to it. But I have begun to feel that our ability to do wrong is the basis of our moral nature, that our bias toward error gives meaning and urgency to our seeking after, tr after truth, that our blindnesses make the beautiful, pervasive as it is, always an object of discovery a thing to be yearned for. Just as, the, just as the norms of our experience of existence are radically untypical of the universe of being, we can reasonably infer, with its entanglements and, in, and the indeterminacies, its dark matter and anti-gravity, so we are singular among creatures precisely in our capacity to refine and elaborate our understanding and the, the awareness of its shortfall. It is this in us that has made tiny blue earth a singular seraphic presence in the great cosmos, watching and pondering, wrapped with wonder. We can feel deficiency in what we know or do. We can hear inadequacy in our most painfully considered phrases. And gracious and chimerical beauty will bless us with the certainty that there is more to be hoped for, more to be tried. The theologian can say all this implies divine intention and also continuous loving engagement. Because God has created the universe, humankind is at the center of it all.